Okay, so over the weekend, Elon Musk did a public poll of people at Twitter, uh, followers at Twitter, who sh- should Donald Trump be allowed back on the service or not? And like 51 to 49, it went, it went that, that Trump should be allowed back on the service. Now, it, it, was Elon Musk not, not going to allow Donald Trump back on the service if the votes had come in against Donald Trump? I, I have significant doubts. I think that Musk was going to let Trump back on Twitter. He's a presidential candidate. He shouldn't have banned from Twitter in the first place. Musk has a broader version of free speech than his predecessors over at Twitter. For what it's worth, by the way, Musk is also saying that he's not going to allow Alex Jones back on Twitter to Alex Jones's anger and consternation. I will say this for Elon Musk. What Elon Musk is doing is he's basically taking sort of personal accountability for who is let back on and who is not let back on. He says, you have questions, come to me, which actually is a more honest standard than what Twitter was doing. Twitter was presenting a false objective version of what was allowing people to get banned or not. Musk is just saying, listen, I'm the king over here. And that means I'm the cottie under the tree. You come to me, you ask, and maybe I'll let you back on. But at least he's taking accountability for all that. Okay, fine. So Musk lifts the ban on Donald Trump and the left goes insane. Totally insane. Because the idea is that it is actively dangerous for Donald Trump to be allowed to speak. Now, remember, this guy was the president of the United States. I didn't like a lot of the things he tweeted. I made very clear that I I thought that what he said between the election and January 6th was not backed by evidence and was explicitly designed to foment chaos. I didn't like any of that stuff. But should he be on Twitter? Of course he should be on Twitter. He's a major political figure. It is insane not to have him on Twitter. But apparently it is an active danger to have him on Twitter because if he says things that you don't like, things that you consider to be lies, then obviously the world becomes a worse place and violence becomes more common. You, however, are pure as the driven snow and you have never said anything that would lead anyone to do anything bad because you're right and he's, and he's very bad. And you know this because you're like God and so you can actually determine that. Now again, I'm not going to pretend that I like everything that Donald Trump says. I'm also not going to pretend that free speech spaces ought to be designed according to my whim. That is not the way that this works. So according to Politico, Musk said that Trump will be reinstated on Twitter, making good on his promise to lift the ban on the former president who had been vi- banished for violating the platform's, platform's rules against inciting violence. Now again, that was always unbelievable that he had been banned for inciting violence considering he did not call for violence. I know the left has been continually struggling with this, but Donald Trump saying bad things between November 4th and January 6th did not actually mean that he was quote unquote inciting violence. To incite violence, you have to say, I wish for you to go and harm this person. It is not enough for you to say that person is doing something wrong. I don't like what that person is doing and we should protest. Incitement is a very high legal standard. Does that mean that, I, again, I cannot like a lot of things. I don't like a lot of what the left says. I'm not going to blame Barack Obama for police officers getting shot in Dallas. I'm not going to blame Bernie Sanders for Congress people getting shot in Virginia. That's not the way this works. But the left will. And so the idea is that Donald Trump being on Twitter is a great danger to everyone. Musk had posted a Twitter poll on Friday asking users to weigh in on whether Trump should be allowed to return. Late on Saturday, the tech billionaire tweeted that based on the results of the poll, the people have spoken, Trump will be reinstated. As of Saturday night, Trump's account was live on the platform. Now, whether Trump decides to come back is another question because Trump decided to sink some of his money, not too much, but some of his money into Truth Social. Truth Social does not have a huge user base. It has a fairly small user base. But if Trump starts tweeting on Twitter, it basically kills Truth Social. So uh, Trump made a statement saying he is not coming back to Twitter. I cannot imagine that that's going to be true, considering that over at Truth Social, he has like 5 million followers. And on Twitter, after being reinstated for like a day, he has 70 million or something. Truth Social... Uh, is is through the roof. It's doing phenomenally well. Truth Social has been very, very powerful, very, very strong. And I'll be staying there, but I hear we're getting a big vote to also go back on Twitter. Uh, I, I don't see it because I don't see any reason for it. Okay, so um, he says there's no reason for him to go back on Twitter because Truth Social is such a massive success. Not true, but he is, but bottom line is it's the left's reaction that's really telling right here. Get some more on this in just one second. First, I love spending the holidays with my family, and one of the ways I love doing that is with delicious meat from Good Ranchers. As a special gift to my listeners this holiday season, Good Ranchers is giving away two Black Angus New York strip steaks free with your order. These are two 12-ounce steakhouse-quality cuts, a $70 value, absolutely free. You're not going to want to miss this offer. Let me tell you why. Black Angus tastes better, and it's more tender than any other beef. Black Angus meat is marbled in such a way that the fat is distributed thinly and evenly. This marbling gives it a consistent flavor you don't get with other meats. Plus, the Black Angus from Good Ranchers is hand-cut and trimmed by expert butchers, so you know every single piece is going to be exquisite. Go to GoodRanchers.com slash Ben. Use code Ben at checkout for this special offer. 
That's GoodRanchers.com slash Ben for two Black Angus New York strip steaks free with your order. Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. Let me just say, the meat at Good Ranchers is fantastic. They actually got me a kosher steak and they grilled it up for me on a kosher barbecue. It was magnificent. I love steak. I'm a steak aficionado. Good Ranchers meat, fan freaking fantastic. GoodRanchers.com slash Ben. Use code Ben at checkout for this special offer. It's GoodRanchers.com slash Ben for two Black Angus New York strip steaks free with your order. And so you have Sam Harris, who says that he should not be allowed back on Twitter because he spreads dangerous lies. This is Sam Harris, who the same Sam Harris, who, by the way, said, that he would not have cared if Hunter Biden like killed and ate children. Maybe the story should have been suppressed before the election because after all, Hunter Biden was not a danger to the Republican Donald Trump was. He tweeted out, if you do bring him back, you shouldn't. Please have a terms of service that covers the deliberate spreading of dangerous lies and then apply it. He'll be off again within a week. Now, the question is, what constitutes a dangerous lie? What constitutes a dangerous lie? Well, I mean, I think that there are, there are many dangerous lies on Twitter that are routinely allowed. In fact, some of them are trended on Twitter for months at a time. But again, there's, there's no actual standard here for the left, except I don't like it, so it shouldn't be exposed to the public view. I don't like a lot of things. They should still be exposed to the public view. So you have Adam Schiff, who for years paraded around saying that essentially the republic was in the hands of the Russians because Donald Trump had been rigged into the presidency by Russian collusion. And he's like, well, no, of course we shouldn't allow Trump back on Twitter because that would just be, that'd be terrible. I want to begin with the news overnight that Donald Trump has been reinstated by Elon Musk on Twitter. Watching the January 6th committee hearings, Trump's tweets were a big part of the story to be told. What, what do you think of him being back on Twitter? I think it's a terrible mistake. And you're absolutely right. As we showed in the January 6th hearings, the president used that platform to incite that attack on the Capitol. Uh, his comments about the vice president, his own vice president, put Mike Pence's life uh, in danger. He showed no remorse about that. Uh, he continues to lie about uh, his actions on that day. Uh, again, trotting out Adam Schiff to talk about lies in public life and what should and should not be allowed is a hell of a move by ABC News. Speaking of the news services, one of the funniest things is that CBS News over the weekend had said that they were going to halt activity on Twitter because of, quote unquote, security concerns. They said after pausing for much of the weekend to assess the security concerns, CBS News and Stations is resuming its activity on Twitter as we continue to monitor the situation. So they stayed off of Twitter for a grand total of less than 40 hours. They were like, wow, Twitter is not a safe place. It's not a safe place. And 40 hours later, like, man, we still got to get some clicks. So uh, maybe we should go back on Twitter. And this is the stupid game that we are supposed to believe they play is that there's some sort of principle here. There is no principle. There, there really isn't. It's just a matter of can we somehow pressure people into silencing opinions that we don't like? And that really is a danger to the republic. See, see, the thing is this. There are people who are dangerous to human beings. Those people typically have a lot of red flags attached to them. A normal person who follows politics, I mean like a sane and rational person who follows politics, typically does not pick up guns and go start murdering random people at a gay club. That's not what a normal person does. Normal people do not go and shoot up schools. Normal people do not go and shoot up the Walmart. Almost always. In fact, I would, I would venture to say, in every case I know of, publicly, except for one, the Las Vegas massacre, where we still don't know what the hell happened there. Every single other mass shooting that we know of involves a person with violent tendencies who was known to police before. This is an easier pattern to spot and call than it is to actually say entire broad scale political movements that represent half the country are responsible for extremists who attach themselves to the movements and then to the violent extremists who attach themselves to the extremists. And yet the left is using what's happening out here to go after this. And that, that's their, that's, that's the whole shtick. And that's why it's connected to what's happening with Trump. And so, so Jonathan Greenblatt over at the ADL, he tweeted out, and it's just, a, I'm sorry, it's a terrible tweet thread. For Elon Musk to allow Donald Trump back on Twitter ostensibly after a brief poll shows he is not remotely serious about safeguarding the platform from hate, harassment, and misinformation. Well, I mean, again, at least Musk is making himself accountable. He's like, listen, I'm making the call. Blame me if you don't like it. Greenblatt says, as we've said before, Trump used Twitter to foment intolerance, issue threats, and incite a violent attack against the U.S. government. Moreover, he has shown no indication he would do anything different if given the opportunity. When ADL and other stop, for hate prof stop hate for profit leaders met with Musk, he committed to not replatform anyone regardless of stature until he installed a transparent, clear process that took into consideration the views of civil society. I mean, frankly, a public poll is, is a pretty transparent, clear process that takes into consideration the views of civil society. It's actually better than, than a backroom coterie of dudes with cigars figuring it out. Greenblatt said Elon Musk's decisions over the last month have been erratic and alarming, but this decision is dangerous and a threat to American democracy. Trump speaking on Twitter is a threat to American democracy. Is American democracy really that fragile? 
Is it really that fragile? He said, we need to ask, is it time for Twitter to go? Elon Musk then tweeted back, hey, stop defaming me. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair, and it wasn't, by the way, just the ADL. The NAACP did the same thing. The NAACP called for a complete pause by all advertisers still funding Twitter after the restored account access to Trump. So Trump being on Twitter means that all advertisers should stop advertising on Twitter. And the NAACP will use whatever political weight it still has in order to go after advertisers, presumably that spend their money on Twitter. Alrighty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into Attorney General Merrick Garland appointing a special prosecutor to investigate Donald Trump. We'll be getting to the World Cup and virtue signaling with rainbow armbands, plus a new boss over at Disney, same as the old boss. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.